Hi guys, welcome back. This is Dr. Gillard. Uh, we're going to continue on our discussion of human skull osteology uh, by talking about the maxilla, and we'll we'll hit the zygomatic bone as well in this video. Okay, uh, both of them are two-pieced bones. So the maxilla, let's start with first. This is the maxilla, all in blue. Uh, we have the body of the maxilla is right about here. And we have several processes. So we've talked about this a little before, but this is the frontal process of the maxilla. Frontal process of the maxilla. This portion, where it articulates with the zygomatic bone, is called the zygomatic process of the maxilla. This portion that articulates with the teeth, that's called the alveolar process of the maxilla. And before I flip it over, also note that we have a, an orbital portion of the maxilla here. And now let's flip it over. Now we can see we have a palatine process, which makes up the anterior two-thirds of the heart palate. Posterior process of the maxilla, and there's two of them. Okay, let's do sutures. While I have it flipped over, uh, we see we have a suture here. This is called the intermaxillary suture. Okay, I like to call it the inferior intermaxillary suture because we have an anterior version of this as well. Might as well hit the hard palate since we're here. Uh, this brown bone, is, we covered this a little bit already. This is the palatine bone, uh, which is shaped like an L. See, here's part of the bottom of the L, which is the horizontal plate. Some call it the transverse plate of the palatine bone. And then we have the major uh, vertical part of the L here. This is the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone. And if you look closely, up, you can see it splits, it bifurcates at the end into a sphenoid process here. And I don't know if you can see that, but that's the orbital process in front. And then we have a foramen, very important foramen right there, which you can see. That's the sphenopalatine foramen. Okay, but uh, back to the hard palate. Um, so that's the horizontal plate again of the palatine bone. This is, it has a suture here. That's called the interpalatine suture. Now the palatine bones meet the maxilla in this suture right here. And when it comes to naming, the maxilla is always in the back of the bus. It's always last. So this is the uh, palatine maxillary suture. Palatine maxillary suture. Okay, so let's go back to the, flip this guy back on his side. While we're on our suture roll, let's talk about these sutures. Uh, we have a suture here between the zygomatic, the zygomatic process of the maxilla and the zygomatic bone. This is called the zygomatical maxillary suture. Zygomatical maxillary suture. If we go into the orbit. see it again right here that's still zygomatical maxillary suture we covered these already but uh, this suture between the frontal bone and the frontal process of the maxilla this is called the frontal maxillary suture now we're missing the nasal bone one nasal bone uh, but this um, so while we might as well say that that's the frontal nasal suture right there but there is a suture between the nasal bone and the maxilla right here so that's called the nasal maxillary suture nasal maxillary suture now we haven't done the orbit yet but I guess we're slowly getting the orbit, but I'll dedicate a tape to that or a video to that. There is an articulation here between the, what's that bone? Lacrimal bone and the maxilla. That's called the lacrimal uh, maxillary suture. 
lacrimal maxillary suture. Okay. Now, remember I said there was an inferior intermaxillary? Here's the anterior intermaxillary suture right here. Okay, and it goes over these little bumps, these little sharp things right here. Go to the side view, you can probably see those better. Okay, those are the anterior nasal spines of the maxilla. Uh, the nose hole, which we don't call a nose hole, what do we call this? It's a piriform aperture. It is formed by these nasal notches. So it's the nasal notch of the maxilla here. We have a foramen here. You can see it on the other side as well. That's the inf the infraorbital foramen. Here's the infraorbital canal. You can see right here and here for the infraorbital nerve. Um, is there a suture right here? What's the deal here? No, there's no suture between the, the uh, sphenoid and the maxilla here. This is the, what is that structure? Inferior orbital fissure. Uh, V2 goes through here. We'll talk about that more when we get to the orb. Um, the zygomatic bone, let's hit real quick. It's a small one. Remember I said in the first video, it's important. Uh, it's got an AKA, two AKAs. It's called the Mahler bone uh, and the zygoma, uh, the older terminology. And it literally connects the, what was this part of the cranium called? The two big divisions, the neurocranium with the visceral cranium or the facial skeleton. So it has two processes. It has a temporal process of the zygomatic bone right here, which connects with the zygomatic process of the temporal bone, and this is the, what suture? That's the zygomatical temporal suture. Zygomatical temporal suture. This process here, that's the frontal process of the zygomatic bone. Now here's a common error in the literature. Um, I think I know where it comes from. I actually did some investigation, but this part of the bone, uh, we don't really call this, you would think it would be called the maxillary process, the zygomatic bone, but it's really not. Actually, Gray's called it that back in 1912, but now the 14th version of Gray's, which is uh, the one I have by Strandring, um, this is actually called the maxillary margin, the maxillary margin of the uh, of the zygomatic bone, so it's not a process. But it does form, again, the zygomatical frontal suture here. Uh, we talked about this suture, right? Did we talk about that? That's the frontal zygomatic suture here. Um, and now there's three surfaces here. We have the body has three surfaces. Uh, there's a lateral surface here. And then we have a orbital surface here. Um, you can see a hole right there, framing. I'll put that above. There's also another hole right here. That's a zygomatical facial foramen for the passage of the zygomatical facial nerve. So we're talking about surfaces. And then we have a, this is called the temporal surface right here. And that forms part of the, the anterior border of an important fossa called the temporal fossa, which we'll, maybe if we have time, we'll talk about the dreaded fossas later.